I went ahead and got started. You sure you don't mind treating me? What? Are you actually able to pay? Wish I could, but I don't think they'd take this. You don't sound like you're gonna relax during this meal. Depends on what you say. Hopefully I'll relax enough to enjoy the duck. So, uh, how do you know Arakawa-san? I'm on the edge of my seat here. It wasn't long after the war the counterfeit bills started being produced in Ijincho. It was top secret. Only the heads of the Seiryu clan and the Liumang, plus some officers, knew about it. Outside of that inner circle, they also had to hire people to smuggle the bills. Smugglers? And one of them was a traveling actor. His name was Toshio Arakawa. He was Masumi Arakawa's father. What? One day, he came to us saying he lost an entire suitcase filled with a hundred mil in fake yen. No excuse in the world could have saved him. A mistake that grave required the Seiryu clan to make an example out of him for the other smugglers. <laughs> but remember, only a few people at the top even knew about the counterfeiting. It wasn't a task they could hand to just anybody. So I, being next in line to inherit the clan, was entrusted to carry it out. So did you... you actually... Yes. I killed Toshio Arakawa, father of Masumi Arakawa, in this very place, 40 years ago. But I had no idea who was in the room with my target. By the time I learned it was his 14-year-old son, it was too late. I had to go through with the hit, knowing this boy would see his father die. To make my guilt even worse, later I found out why Toshio lost the fake bills. His wife and her lover had stolen them. And those two fell into the ocean and disappeared. Their corpses were never even found. So Arakawa-san lost both his parents, one after the other. And his only other friends, the theater troupe, disbanded soon after without their leader. Masumi Arakawa became a drifter, along with a few other actors. They couldn't trust anyone, so what other path was there for them, except becoming Yakuza in Kamurocho? Arakawa joined a low-ranking family in the Tojo clan called the Hikawa family. Life wasn't easy for him there. 
They were the kind of family that took hits without thinking twice. Really? Yes. So they were always in need of ways to dispose of a body. Masumi Arakawa was tapped to help with that. And he was extremely cautious. To do it, he started coming all the way to the homeless camp in Ijincho. Really? Even though the family was based in Tokyo? Why? Well, truthfully, he wanted an excuse to come to Yokohama. Because it would afford him opportunities to hunt his father's killer. I see. So Arakawa-san was using the homeless camp to dispose of bodies all the way back then. Indeed. As for his hunt, he researched Yakuza and criminals every time he was here. All he started with was a single clue. His own childhood memory of the suspicious waiter he saw here that night. Eventually, seven years after the murder, I received an invitation to come here. He signed his invitation Masumi Arakawa. It was a bold declaration, and I knew immediately the running would be futile. So I came here, alone. I didn't even bring a bodyguard. Why the hell not? Well, to put it simply, I was prepared to die. But, I mean... In this line of work, there are no good ways to die. And I can think of worse ways to go that would not give that boy the justice he'd earned. The memory of what I'd done to him never left me, you know. It was always like a small bone stuck in my throat. He was sitting right where you are now. Here? Yes. He didn't look a day over twenty, but his eyes had that hard, flinty gaze of an old killer. I couldn't help myself. I told him everything. I told him why I killed Toshio Arakawa. I even told him about the secret counterfeiting. I figured I was dead anyway. He had a gun in his hand. And all he had to do was pull the trigger. But he never once interrupted me. When I'd finished, he slowly stood up. I stopped him as he turned to leave. Didn't you come here for revenge? I asked. And? What did he say? He said, If only you had ignored my invitation, then I could have shot you in the back. Then, he left. Uh, boss. In 1984, the 10,000 yen bill changed from the face of Prince Shotoku to Yukichi Fukuzawa. By that time, Arakawa had found his own Yakuza family. So I sent him a gift. What was it? A fresh batch of crisp, fake bills featuring Yukichi Fukuzawa. They were defective prints with nothing on the back. <laughs> Not exactly legal tender. Then how was that a gift? It's hard to explain. If I had to say... Was out of gratitude. Sure, but for what? I should have died that day I met with Arakawa. I would have been right. And yet he spared me. Not only that, but he lifted a terrible weight from my chest. Furthermore, it's not an exaggeration to say the equilibrium among the Ejin Three continues to this day because of him. Wow. I owe him an unfathomable debt, and one day I, I must pay it back. The defective bills were how I chose to communicate the sentiment.
The counterfeiting secret is Ijincho's weakness. And it was only thanks to Arakawa that the Ijin Three could continue to secretly wield that power. But of course, that means if he ever feels like it was a mistake to let me live, he can use the fake bills to unravel everything I've built. The gift wasn't the bills themselves, they were leverage. I actually wrote something on the back to that effect. Neither justice nor mercy should tip the scale. It means that those in power must reward and punish where necessary. I felt it was an appropriate message. I suppose the writing has faded at this point. Whoa. So that's the whole story. Up till this moment. But now I'm sitting across from a man holding one of those fake pills. Which, of course, is a message from Arakawa that only I could understand. The message is, Masumi Arakawa sees you as a beloved family member. Arakawa-san thinks of me as family. He would not have placed that bill in your pocket lightly. Do you see its significance now? After everything I've told you. <clears throat> there is almost no doubt in my mind that Arakawa did not want you killed. So he didn't shoot you out of malice. He shot you so that you would be brought here, be saved by the homeless, and eventually meet up with me. Do you see? <clears throat> well, that's everything I can tell you. That's plenty. Thank you, Chairman. I see it all now. I always kind of figured. You did? Well, it's your move now. I've only told you what I know, so... It's okay. That's enough. I trust you. <laughs> well, I don't hear that often. Yeah, neither do I. Not even from my friends. But those friends are trustworthy to me. And so are you. I believe everything you said. And my faith in Arakawa-san is coming back strong. Kasuga. Yeah? Are you a blood relative of Arakawa's? <laughs> no, it's not like that. I see. Well. He must have been happy to have such loyalty as yours. As proud as any father, I think. Nagatacho has been rocked by party chair Ogikubo's sudden retirement due to illness. Long a central figure in politics, Ogikubo was the prime minister's last ally in keeping parliament together. An election shall be held to reaffirm the will of the people. I look forward to a new citizens' liberal party and a new cabinet. The prime minister made more shockwaves later that day. In the afternoon, he announced he would appoint Ryo Aoki to Ogikubo's now vacant post. Aoki will be the first sitting governor to also serve as the ruling party's chair. This bold move is sure to have ripple effects. Hmm? How are you feeling, former chairman? Surely the governor of Tokyo can read. My sign says no visitors. <laughs> oh, suddenly rules are important to you. Naturally. Shouldn't you concern yourself with the rules you've 
Already broken? For example, counterfeiting. Your crimes put the entire national economy at risk. Do you know how many lives were saved by what you call a crime? Hundreds. Any politician can say they built a road or passed a law. But how many can say they caught people who fell through the cracks? You think you're talented enough to do that in my stead? <laughs> oh, I've got plenty of talents. I just use them very differently compared to you. For example, I managed to fit your downfall into my already very busy schedule. The governor is the party chair. Nothing could be more ripe for corruption. Oh. Everything I'm gonna do will be labeled scandalous by withered old men like you. But by next year, Japan will have a new standard, and it will have been written by me. Spoken like a true amateur. <laughs> amateur, huh? Let me ask you. Do you remember my first election ten years ago? I asked you for the Citizens Liberal Party endorsement. You insulted me. Your exact words were, Bleach Japan is a bunch of kids playing at politics. Your home district is Kanagawa's second. Isn't that right? I'm happy to tell you. Bleach Japan will be running a candidate there in the next election cycle. And he'll have the Citizens Liberal Party's ringing endorsement. So, how does it feel to have everything taken from you by a bunch of kids? Our candidate's victory in Kanagawa's District 2 is all but certain. So I've come up with a plan for taking out the trash in Ijincho. Of course, we'll probably lose half the population. Are you calling the people of Ijincho trash? I'm calling them disposable. Pardon me? What did you call them? People who fell through the cracks? Can't you see that's their own fault for becoming so dependent on the Grey Zones? They're responsible for maintaining their home. And they failed. That's what makes them disposable. But I must be going. As I said, I've got a busy schedule. Happy retirement, my former chair. I truly wish that for you. I hope you'll visit Ijincho after its beautiful new developments are complete. You'll hardly recognize it, and I can't wait to see the look on your face when you see it. So, it's your hideout? Yep, go ahead. Make yourself at home. I'd love to, but, uh, where could I even do that? Yes, the square footage of this place leaves something to be desired. Well, excuse me. I'm hearing some pretty high standards for a couple of pad crashers. We're not crashing it. Nambasan gave us permission. <laughs> Who the hell says no to Jungi Han when he has to stay the night? I mean, it's freaking Jungi Han. Hey, where are the rest of your people now that Komi Jewel HQ is gone? They're fixing the surveillance system. It will take some time for it to be fully restored. Well, I get why Jungi Han is staying here since his place is a pile of ashes. 
But what's Zhao's excuse? It's not like I could just keep living in Qing Chen after stepping down from the Liu Meng. Wouldn't have sent the right message. So, I've joined the ranks of the homeless. Still doesn't explain why you need to stay here. Maybe because information collects where people do. And this group does seem to be in the know. We do? But we don't even know what happened to Bleach Japan. Did the police ever put a stop to all that craziness? The police? Kasuga-kun, haven't you seen the news? No, haven't had the time. Well, Bleach Japan's reputation in Ijin Show, Hell All of Japan, is golden after the Komi Jewel thing. What? Oh yeah, you wouldn't believe the headlines. Despite peril, brave Bleach Japan topples Komi Jewel Gang. Grassroots Org achieves what police never could. Shit like that. Wow, great journalism. No spin at all. That's not even the worst of it. The reports say that Komiju committed arson during its fight with Bleach Japan. And in the blaze, Bleach Japan director Ogasawara perished. He's dead? Wait, what happened? He was definitely alive after the fire. That's when we interrogated him. Yeah, then the Omi Alliance rescued him. Why would he be... <sighs> Wait, did they? Yes. They probably killed him. I had that thought right away. At least he died the way he wanted to, as a hero of the revolution. That guy? A hero? Why'd they kill him? Because he squawked like a bird when you interrogated him. Why wouldn't they off the guy? Now they're just milking his death for all it's worth. Honestly, it's a brilliant move making it look like he died in the Comey Jewel fire. No crime reports, cops and doctors wouldn't bat an eye. And Bleach Japan gets a nice, tragic death to go on about. Ah, <sighs> damn. I wish we'd picked a fight with dumber enemies. But what can we do? Go to the police and explain how we abducted Ogasawara? <sighs> what would be the point? Half the force is on Mabuchi's payroll. Now they would just book our asses. So Aoki has everyone marching along to his little tune. All in step. Young master. Okay, Bleach Japan's got us by the short hairs there. But what about the fact they were trespassing on Komijo property? Well, they must have figured the public would think the ends justified the means. And they were right. The public thinks Bleach Japan is the hero of this story. The police will never prosecute them for trespassing. At this rate, the Komi Jewel and the Liu Mong are going to be extinct in Ijin Cho. And people like you who give us shelter will be an endangered species. I wish I didn't have to say this, but I suggest you make other living arrangements. I can't. I'm waiting for someone to contact me here. Who? Arakawa-san, he's about to go all in with his next gamble. When that happens, he'll need strong allies. M more than he's already got? I can't say anymore. I'm sorry. Mitsu. I'll be in touch. Hmm. <laughs> well then. But isn't Masumi Arakawa the man who shot you? The boss wasn't trying to kill me. He shot me so I could live. Sorry, but don't you think that's still kind of fucked up? It's a long story. Buy me a beer sometime and I'll tell you all about it. But right now, while we've got you on the team, we need to get shit done. Now we need to stock up on money and supplies because nobody knows what the hell will happen next. That's for sure. Thank <laughs> you. 
Welcome. Thanks. Check that fruit out. Didn't notice this was a persimmon tree. And damn, it's a big one, ain't it? Hello there. Hmm? Are you out for a stroll too? It's the perfect weather for it. Yeah, sure. Hey, Kanachan. <sighs> you guys taking a walk too? Yes, staying cooped up in the house doesn't do much for one's health. So we step out for a walk from time to time. Oh, cool. Not like it matters. I'm going to die soon anyway. Once that persimmon falls from that tree, my life is over. There you go again with that nonsense. Sorry about that. No, don't sweat it. Well, if you'll excuse us. Let's go, Kanachan. That girl. I wonder if she's sick. When the persimmon falls from the branch. Can't stand a chance. Well, 
I got Take this. this. Don't You're in for it now. Check this out. Got it Let's go. Let's go. Take your best shot. Well, look what the cat dragged in. Hamago-san? What's all this? Didn't I tell you? I'm decluttering. <laughs> I lugged all this out here by myself. Oh, I'm beat. I was hoping you big, strong men might do the rest. You buying new futons or something? Business must be good. Wait, there's no one here. Where are the girls? They all quit. What? I'm closing up shop. Huh? <laughs> uh, uh. Eugene Show Revitalization Shelter. It's a facility in Hamakita Park. Bleach Japan set it up. Girls from the industry and their families can live there free of charge. For free? Damn. And all your girls went there? Sure did. Why wouldn't they? The facility's offering job training and legal help with visas. No better place for girls like them who don't have citizenship. And Bleach Japan is behind this whole operation? Yeah, they're being useful for once. They're gonna open more just like it, too. And they even offered to buy my place and turn it into a shelter. But then what are you going to do? This place is your bread and butter, isn't it? Oh, they thought of that. They gave me a job at the shelter. I'm gonna be the dorm mother. Oh, it's good pay, and perfect for a feisty old gal like me. Gotta say, I'm coming around on these do-gooders. 
Come on, Hamako-san. Don't you remember what they put you through? Yeah, sure, they were annoying. Bunch of kids tramping around, shouting shit they heard in prep school. But hey, now they're putting their money where their mouth is. It wasn't just a bunch of whining. They actually did something about it. And apparently the shelters were Ryo Aoki's idea. I have to say, it's pretty damn genius of him. Not to be a downer, but don't you think he's basically just buying votes? Once the election is over, I bet you he's gonna forget all about these shelters. Yeah, seriously. Politicians pull this shit all the time. You don't know him. You can't just assume he's like that. Besides, you got some better option for my girls? Any spare rooms you'll let them live in? I'll have you know, Aoki-san came all the way out to a gene chart today. Wait, he's in town? He's attending Ogasawara-san's funeral. See? That shows he's a good guy. The guy has got a million things on his plate, but still carves out time for a friend. You've got no business bad-mouthing him when you don't even know him. The young master. Here, in the Ijin show. You gonna go see him? Yeah. There's stuff I want to ask him about. Uh, me too. Like what his connection to Horonouchi is. You guys are nuts. Well, what's your plan? Stroll up and demand a meeting with the most powerful man in Tokyo? Oh, funerals are easy to sneak into. Everyone's too polite to ask questions. Why are you supporting this lunacy? Sorry, Hamako-san. But do you mind if I get rid of your trash some other day? What's wrong with now? <laughs> There's just this thing I gotta take care of. Fine. Just don't leave me hanging, okay? <laughs> Wouldn't dream of it. So does anyone know where this funeral is? If it's any Jincho, it's gotta be at the morgue on Central. That's where Nonomiya's funeral was. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's roll on over there. Ogasawara-kun, I remember the day we met like it was yesterday. Nice. There's still time. Hey, let us through. We're here to pay our respects. Hey, are you with Bleach Japan? No, but we knew Ogasawara. Not good enough. The ceremony's just for family and Bleach Japan members. Well, maybe they'll let us light some incense. <laughs> They aren't even allowing journalists like me in. This monitor is all we get. Today, we celebrate Ogasawara-kun's memory. We do so here in Ijincho, the city of his heart and soul. You, more than anyone, yearn to see this city reborn. It was only six months ago that you came here with your family. And I remember how eager you were to change this town for the better. It became your passion in life. But one cannot truly care about a city until they become one of its people, which is why I was so moved when you chose to reside in Ijincho. There is no greater tragedy than the dreams we leave behind in death, and yours were bigger than most ever dared. I know this as your classmate in our youth as your peer who shared your ambitions. But most of all, simply as a friend, you left too soon. 
this is truly, truly a great loss. And so, what choice do we have but to face the future without you? We look to Kumekun, the protege to whom you entrusted so much. He has stepped forward to carry on your dream. And is there any greater honor than when, in our passing, someone else picks up the torch where we left it? You and I always believed we could help people find their way together. Which is why, in the coming election, I will throw the entirety of my support behind Kume. I say this not as the Citizens' Liberal Party Chair, but for you, Ogasawara Kun, as your friend who would see your dream come true. I swear to do everything in my power to bring your dream, Free Jincho, to fruition. That is the least I can do for you, my old friend. Rest now and smile down on us from heaven. <sighs> Sawara san We will continue your work for you. Just listen to this governor. He really cares. He's in more grief than anyone here. And he still gave a speech. Strong man given a strong eulogy. If Aoki really did order Ogasawara's death, well then he's quite the actor. Bastard's grooming Kume for political office. What the hell is his plan? Hey, there he is. Let's move. How many seats is the Citizens Liberal Party targeting this cycle? Any comment? Alkisan, should we take your statement today as a campaign launch announcement? Any comment at all? Just a soundbite, Alkisan. Clear the way. What's your motive for holding a new election? Hey, don't push. I said don't push. All right, folks, let him through. Let him through. Alki. Hey, Governor Alki. Ah, that's no good. Can't even get close. Let's head him off. How? It's not like the governor took a train here. He's got to have a car nearby. Well, sure, but how are you going to find it? Check every parking spot in the neighborhood? You know, I once read in some tabloid that celebrities park underground to avoid the paparazzi. Aoki probably uses the same strategy, don't you think? Yeah, that's a thought. Any underground lots around here? Yeah, there's a big one. Its entrance is by the river. Great. Let's check it out. <laughs> 